parts of Belarus. Uh, and uh, the, pro the problem that we identified uh, uh, is that youth in rural areas is excluded from the labor markets. And so now we will be trying to, uh, to help them to overcome this problem. Um, the advantage of the area which we can use in order to overcome the problem is the capacity of producing dairy products, because in that area there's lots of gold milk, and uh, they have a secret special receipt of this milk, which is unique in the country. So this is the, uh, the, uh, their advantage, the comparative advantage also that they can, uh, can uh, well, use. The opportunities uh, <coughs> uh, is to find a niche in the market, uh, and uh, well, as I said, this is good cheese production. The, the uh, object of, uh, of these projects is basically to facilitate, facilitate access of local youth farmer, young farmers in Belarus to make to, and to create jobs so that young people would not um, find themselves in a situation where there is no work in the village and they either have to move to urban areas and compete there or they will just be frustrated so being unemployed in the uh, villages. Um, so uh, now we'll go to the main obstacles that uh, we can face while um, uh, trying to implement this project. Uh, first of all, it's funding uh, because uh, for uh, making good uh, cheese, even with special recipe, we need some uh, technology. And then uh, mobilizing people. Uh, even though we also uh, have uh, uh, milk and uh, uh, this recipe and uh, technology, let's say we uh, have to somehow um, try to encourage uh, young people uh, to participate in this project. Uh, then uh, one of the uh, obstacles, <coughs> it can be a uh, lack of support from local government and uh, assistance from the local uh, uh, elites. Um, excuse me, could you elaborate on that? Mm -hmm. Resistance from local elites, what do you mean? It might be that the local elites try and you know, go far. When people start uh, getting jobs, they, they will be in power. That place, they can be, uh, they can, the elites can feel threatened okay. that the people now are getting jobs, are getting empowered. They might not have hold over them, over the decision making process. Okay. Okay. And then, uh, moving further, it will be, um, let's say, oh, we already uh, encouraged use, uh, so we need some, um, some Provided with training. Yeah, with training, yeah, or because they to learn uh, to teach them how to to use uh, other uh, technology and how uh, actually to make uh, this uh, cheese. And how to organize trade. Yeah, to organize tra uh, this uh, trade and uh, uh, another obstacles it will be um, that uh, the market, um, the um, bigger market can be closed or monopolized. Mm -hmm. Still, we do have, uh, we do need some um, uh, support uh, while um, um, provide like a, a how to bring these uh, new goods on the uh, market. How to 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 show people that it's some kind of unique PR, yeah, yeah, to make this yeah, kind of PR. Thank you. Um, and on this slide, you will see what benefits we will have from our social enterprise. Um, First, uh, we are trying to involve in our project um, a vulnerable um, layer of youth. So this is youth can have difficulties and, uh, uh, let's go, oh, sorry. Um, they will get, um, they will become um, employed and become independent from their parents and have, uh, will have possibility to find a work and being incorporated social life and earn, of course, an income. Then we will raise awareness of, um, on poverty in the community and attract more funds if the project will start excellent, so it will attract more funds from as local government or maybe from other sources. Then uh, we um, channel the extra profit to the development of the village. Um, to develop infrastructure, tourism, education, and health. That we decided that will be our social social part of social yeah, yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, social 
into a smoothie with a social process. Yeah, so we, that's basically what we were talking about, how to uh, make it not only socially uh, profit oriented, but also advance your community and help it grow the elderly people and more disabled people mm -hmm. and so on. Okay. So thank you very much for attention. Questions? Questions? <laughs> I, I, I have one question because you uh, you said that the youth might not be interested, that they might not feel uh, positive about creating and then to go to maybe they want to move to the city and just leave that all the time. How do you encourage them to stay in building an enterprise? What can you do? This, uh, they have no choice. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have to build a repo with them. Uh, initially, people might not just come. Mm -hmm. We'll have to mobilize people, tell them the advantage of, advantage of it. We'll have to persuade them. So that repo building might take some time. Many people might come and they might be interested in the initial phase and might back out. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, some people might uh, see the advantage of it and then get into it. So I think the first step would be getting in touch with the people and uh, building our rapport and mm -hmm. facilitating it. that to move to city and to find employment there in Belgium is not always that easy. And many people actually face the situation when they have to come back. And uh, what can be attractive I think, about this kind of project is not, not a, a possibility of making some money, but also being innovative, being creative, and play a role in community, not be dependent, you know, part of the great, great crowd, but it's also a way to to have your kind of say. I think it's very important, especially for young people when they're in the process of self-determination. I think it's playing more. And uh, even after the project starts, when this, uh, when it's just not in the village, then you start sending people to different places so that they're exposed. Mm -hmm. Probably that exposure can also help uh, yeah. other people to see that, OK, this person is going, next time we should also try. And we need to give them an incentive to say that if this project works, we can try and see what others are interested in being against starting another project. Mm -hmm. This is in fact what Andre said to, uh, earlier today uh, about being an example, creating models, and then. <coughs> okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah. Thank you. I, want, I want to have a uh, very brief round of comments. So, first of all, thank you very much. Uh, please include this in uh, your group work and uh, just develop it because the purpose of this uh, group work on the report is not just to make about the report but also propose some things which need to be or could be uh, tested and implemented. So this is one thing. What's the it's, it's for all, all the groups. Uh, two comments on this. I find uh, this approach extremely uh, important and uh, interesting uh, for several reasons. Uh, one. And it can, it can have uh, much more benefits if, we do it, if you do it right. First of all, it uh, addresses the issue of uh, employment. Hello? Thank you. May I have your attention? <laughs> Thank you. It addresses the issue of employment uh, in a very sustainable manner. It's not just uh, doing something for the sake of keeping people uh, employed or something jobs, but uh, really creating value which can be uh, increased uh, going up uh, the value chain. And uh, I, would, I would suggest looking into this in, the, in a more networked manner, because around uh, this idea you can have a network of uh, different mutually complementing uh, uh, social enterprises which mutually reinforce each other. You mentioned several functions like uh, positioning this product, advertising, making it fashionable, and so on. So this is one area in which perhaps the producers of the cheese would not be the best to do. So you have already a function can be done by a cooperative or 
uh, other form of uh, social enterprise which will be marketing these things and marketing this way of life. The second, uh, uh, you need to, ho to have, you also mentioned it, but a little bit not very explicit, you need to have uh, uh, access to the market so that the market is not close to this product. And this is uh, an area which you can have a lot of things, internet uh, distribution, uh, direct client-to-client -client relationships, using Twitter, so on. So another area of activities which could be also uh, separate enterprises. Taken from a uh, perspective of individual enterprises, they can be just separate uh, entities, and uh, usually that's what uh, is being done. Somebody is doing cheese, somebody is doing online marketing, but people rarely go and uh, network together. And I think if you combine this idea, production cycle, with uh, all the others, and uh, do this in a more comprehensive manner, it doesn't need to be formalized, but uh, the, 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 this network needs to be somehow uh, articulated uh, up front, uh, the multiple benefits will be really, really huge. Okay. And just a comment, maybe it's also, uh, bear in mind in other groups, uh, this networking and uh, but multiplicator. But doesn't mean that all the whole village will work just for the milk in the like, industry and then it's something? I, ideally, why not? Uh, the whole village uh, covered by a set of uh, different uh, small entities, each of them is independent, provides different services, but uh, integrated into a vertical chain of integration. In fact, this is how big companies work. So you can have a socially based uh, model replicating the, the logic of a big uh, producer, but which is sustainable economically, environmentally, and socially. I don't see why a big village cannot be involved in, <laughs> not be the entire village, in but big part of this village involved in this. Because uh, in particularly in countries which had the experience of the centralized uh, uh, agriculture, cohorts or whatever, uh, we have this heritage of uh, people now uh, a bank a privatized uh, uh, or given back the land or resources, but uh, they don't know what to do with this. Uh, the most they do is uh, usually uh, grow some uh, goat milk or potatoes or something for old consumption, but they are cut off uh, access to the market because they're too small, the costs uh, for access are too high, and simply they, they cannot do anything with this. So, <laughs> what could be done? Go back to the Colchos. Okay, maybe it's one thing. Maybe in Belarus. They still sell it to Colchos. My aunt does not sell for But uh, the other, the other option is uh, exactly to provide people with these missing links, and the missing links is uh, the access to markets, access to technologies, and optimization of uh, the, the individual functions in terms of uh, division of labor. And this is area in which social enterprises can play really huge role. Thank you. Thank you. Now,
so social enterprise can be a form where we could address the scarcity of uh, jobs. Uh, the obstacles we have identified, first the uh, legislation constraints. Yes, so in uh, our region, most of, uh, since we are coming from um, kind of post-Soviet countries, uh, legislation are not really favorable to innovative solutions, how to approach problems that we are facing, facing now, how to approach uh, problems uh, and not only in times of uh, small uh, available funding or budget, but also in changing mentalities. So we thought that uh, legislation is not really favorable for these people to implement some innovative solution that, is not, that was not uh, as a part of solution and in consideration in, in previous time. I mean, there's no tradition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, citizen resistance. <laughs> I think one of the arguments that is clarifying by, if it's not done, uh, the citizens have prejudices in uh, this region towards disabled people. I mean, it's a very segregated society. Disabled people are in different schools. Uh, they have, they don't really have labor opportunities. So there might be also a need for change in the mentality and how to integrate back with single people. So basically, lack of trust is also uh, very strongly related with what just Dara said, that actually people do not cooperate. They just exclude and isolate that people uh, who have certain disabilities or disadvantaged people or minorities. And they don't don't trust each other because, of course, how can trust somebody who never communicated with? Mm -hmm. And also, this is a lack of trust in the quality of the product they have to produce because if it's produced by a multinational company, then you receive five years of guarantee and you know that the company will be there. So if it's broken, you can go back and just um, change, change mm -hmm. it. Or also, in, you know it that uh, I mean. Food production, it's a safe, I mean, or at least you think it's a safe food. So, yeah. Yeah, or even like even quality. Then limited funding, including collateral. Uh, since in times of austerity, everybody's facing problem with the that funding. Uh, people even to start a small enterprise. Availability of technology, I think we have seen this uh, in the field trip, so you really need this kind of technology transfer to launch these kind of enterprises, so you need the technology from outside. And uh, access to market, this is also uh, mentioned that you need marketing strategy and you need a viable business plan. Mm -hmm. So, solutions that we found actually is improvement of legislation, and uh, also the role of the NGOs and civil society could push a bit governments uh, that legislation could be uh, amended, uh, adopted, that. Uh, there will be a bigger possibilities to make uh, to establish social enterprises. Mm -hmm. Or even incentives. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, also, awareness raising and that reflects to the citizens' resistance and enhance of cooperation because point two and three they are actually very interrelated. Because you, you, if you uh, raise awareness that these people are the same human, human beings as we all are, they have some disadvantages, but it doesn't mean that these disadvantages can be overcome with a bit of cooperation and a bit of uh, common understanding. And you just maybe sit and in some social events, you sit and you see that they have the same needs as we have, so they are not some, somebody, some aliens from Mars. Yeah. Microfinance or micro loans are already proved to be a valid form uh, for financing or start these uh, kind of social enterprises. And subsidies can be a financial incentive to employ disabled people, for example, or to have the social enterprises at the beginning to buy the uh, technology that is needed. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, as you mentioned, in the problem uh, obstacle for the availability of technology. So uh, technology transfer also relates with capacity building, skills enhancement, and knowledge that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so that people uh, be, uh, will be trained to, to use this technology that they wouldn't just trust on old uh, machinery and uh, old methods that he has been used 100 years ago. Mm -hmm. And assistance in preparing business plans and marketing and promotion plan, it's also based on cooperation, so we could come from another social uh, enterprise that's already successful, it could come from a business course that mm -hmm. have the knowledge uh, to give it to the social enterprises or any other actors uh, from a private company who wants to run some CSR program or whatever. And obviously it continues to get access to the market. Okay, comments. Uh, questions. <laughs> Let me start. Then. There is, there is one. No, please. <laughs> oh, you made my life more difficult now. Actually, I was about to criticize you. So I am sorry to be, rude, to be rude, but uh, no, I won't be rude. But if you go to the first slide, mm -hmm. so, in the second. Uh, obstacles. obstacles, and then you, and then you move to the next slide. And the solutions are not the obstacles. It's uh, so the same thing, but uh, slightly reformulated. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. The second, my major problem, actually, what what I was, what are you supposed to do? What is the idea? What is the substance? Mm -hmm. This is the process mm -hmm. and the framework. Okay, we agree. Legislation, awareness, everything. But legislation for what? Awareness for what? Road cheese or vehicles or small scale uh, transportation. What kind of enterprise? Yes. Sorry, what kind of enterprise? Yes. Because all this, all this are uh, not neutral. They are very country specific. It's not specific. How do you want to build capacity, for example, in human stuff? Or, for example, we talk about legislation, but in Poland we already have legislation. So, actually, it's not a solution for the Polish. So, this is a good introduction. <laughs> 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 I hope in the afternoon you will develop this. So yes. More in deep. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, next group. Dependent and, and that you are not dependent on social benefits and um, 
BA, which is coming from in the state. But if you become entrepreneurial and if you are employed, then, then you can increase your employment uh, Then, um, what is in many cases, I think, a huge problem is, is the, the lack of legal status that the social enterprises are not involved in the legal system. This is mainly uh, this is the same here in Hungary as well, which means that the government, of course, won't be really aware of this issue and to improve uh, this. And what the solution would be to lobby uh, by the government to involve this and to, uh, yeah, as uh, another group also mentioned, uh, with the cooperation with the NGOs and another partners to, to raise awareness of it. Then, uh, what do you think, I mean, which is also mentioned, is the lack of finance, which is in many cases a huge challenge. And, uh, for example, in Hungary and also, as far as I heard in Poland, and in the EU country, the social enterprise and social economy is a very good phrase to get EU fund. So if or the government or NGOs or, uh, or agencies can support uh, these social enterprises to, to apply for these grants, to help them how to make the application and, and how to create those, those um, requirements uh, which are needed to get this. Uh, this grant that will be very important to also involve the bank sector. For example, in Hungary there is an organization which improves social enterprises, social entrepreneurs, and they they cooperate with uh, the Hungarian bank, and usually they, they uh, write or um, they make a competition where the social enterprises can apply, and if they meet the requirements, then they get a uh, small amount of money. But is it the uh, with the help of the bank. So it was, it was the banking sector can be a good solution. Then Josephine, uh, our bank, it's really uh, related to human capital, it's the cultural restrictions that in many countries there is a social pressure on women that they have all the roles not to be an entrepreneur or also I think in, in our region, for example, to become an entrepreneur as a gypsy, you have to meet a lot of, uh, lot of problems and difficulties. Mm. For women, um, um, maybe according to the Indian example, that building capacity can help allow them to create uh, that uh, uh, environment and facilitate them to really to work. And in many cases, if they are the exact, the direct target group, then it can also help to, to involve them. So, entrepreneurship also it is uh, for the minority and for women as well or also for other vulnerable groups. And uh, another challenge which came up with the inconsistency in the continuity of the policy. Yeah, it's all about politics. So um, well, again, with, with cooperation, um, try to lobby that the new government should continue with, but should continue with the already existing social framework and, and the already existing legal system to bear the social framework. Questions, comments? No one? Come on, guys. Oh. Well, it was a perfect presentation. <laughs> Aren't you an interested party? <laughs> no questions and comments? Um, there is I don't know if, if you've noticed that, but in all of the presentations, there are groups of problems that are repeated all and all, uh, over and over again. Uh, you have mental knowledge problems. There are some <laughs> that you for me. Um, people do uh, have problems with uh, recognizing that a product done by a social enterprise can be as good as the one done by a regular corporation. Uh, people uh, have their uh, uh, their imagination of how a disabled or, or long-time unemployed person would work. Right. So there is this society part that you have to take uh, have in mind to pers persuade them to actually get involved in the enterprise and buy from the enterprise. There are legal obstacles. Uh, many countries uh, make it difficult.
simply difficult for a for an social enterprise to be created and to fully function, right? Uh, you, and you have the, the ones that I think, from our experience, are uh, in part and most difficult to, to overcome are, um, are um, considering the involved party. Uh, motivational part for the people who are to work in the social enterprise is a huge problem. Um, very often we have people uh, dropping out of the uh, of the enterprise or not really feeling positive and optimistic about th their endeavor, right? So there is a huge work on this side too. Um, unfortunately, we're um, quarter past 11, so we should have ended minutes ago and I'm sorry uh, for keeping you here so long. We're staying here with uh, with Fiatek so if you have any questions or, or want to discuss a particular um, issue we're happy to, to have a chat with you. Uh, we also left some some contacts uh, so you can use them freely anytime you want. Thank you very much for your attention and uh, I hope to chat with you a bit during the break. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.